Hey everybody, Tim Hunt here with Vernon Reporter, uh, giving you a little news update here. Every time I sit down to try and write up what's been happening or what's going to be happening and what's in the news, I think it's going to be a, a short summary, but uh, a lot of stuff going on. So uh, let me go through just a couple things here. Again, um, if you um, if you like any of these issues that I've been talking about, that, then you can go to our videos tab. Uh, in the left taskbar and just click on that video tab and a lot of these meetings we've live streamed so if you want to go see the full discussion of the meetings and the issues that I'm talking about just click on there and you can find that information. Um, quickly just to summarize uh, some of the meetings we live streamed last week I'll get into what we're going to cover next week. Uh, Tuesday is the election and I'll talk about that specifically in just a little bit but uh, last week Viroqua City Council met on Tuesday night um, here are just some of the issues they touched on. Um, the city council approved uh, the allowing, they modified their um, zoning ordinance to allow distilleries in B1, B2, and B3 business districts, which are normally industrial or um, B3 is anyway. And uh, but they allowed that usage in B1, B2, B3. Uh, someone has got plans and works to place a distillery on on Main Street at a former business and uh, those plans are in process and uh, they've gotten through another hurdle by uh, getting the City Council to approve uh, modifying that ordinance. Uh, uh, Viroqua homeowner came forward with a chicken ordinance. Remember last year the city modified their um, ordinance to allow chickens in the city. They had no ordinance before to regulate chickens. Uh, part of that ordinance said you could only have a maximum of six chickens. You had to have a certain size coop and so much room in your yard and so on. There was a lot of regulations with that. Well, they had a homeowner come forward, applied for a, a permit, and apparently had more chickens than they had reported on their permit. And so they had a meeting at the city council level, and that homeowner did say they had 12 chickens, wanted to be, uh, well, what they termed grandfathered in legally. That's not really a term, but uh, uh, the council did vote to approve the permit, but said, you know, if somebody makes a complaint, Essentially, if they complain about more chickens than they were supposed to, um, this homeowner also had a pet chicken that uh, li actually lives in the house. It's considered a pet. And uh, so, long story short, council did approve that permit. You can watch that discussion. Um, some of the council members were concerned that you're setting a precedent that everybody can come forward now and say, well, I had 10 chickens before or 15 chickens or whatever. So the um, uh, city also refinanced some... Um, bonds, uh, about $1.2 million in bonds. Occasionally they review uh, the borrowing that they've done. They usually issue bonds for large projects. Um, they're usually 20-year bonds. Um, they had some bonds that were coming due uh, and uh, they were decided to refinance those. It's sort of like refinancing your home mortgage. You can save some money on interest. It makes sense to do it. They refinance $1.2 million, saving about $156,000 over the life of those bonds. Um, you can watch that discussion. The city also uh, voted to approve first reading and waive a second reading, a change in the liquor license ordinance. You remember last year, a little bit of a controversy. Um, uh, some of the business owners in town have been waiting for a liquor license to allow them to serve you know, both hard alcohol and beer, and uh, those licenses are in short supply. Um, there was a business owner that hadn't used theirs in a couple of years, and uh, so the city decided to alter their um, ordinance on that, saying if you don't use your license within 90 days, you have to either surrender it or come forward and explain what you're doing with that license so it doesn't just sit there unused. Um, that uh, got approved by the council. Um, at the county level, there was two meetings last week. Uh, might be of some interest to folks. If you want to know what's going on with county government, some of the issues they're dealing with, they had a meeting of the county executive committee on Wednesday. You can watch a video of that. Just a ton. It was like a two and a half or three hour meeting. Uh, you get an idea of the type of issues that uh, the county is dealing with. Um, this committee is trying to kind of be a more of a long range approach to planning for the county, budgeting issues, and uh, just uh, coordinating between departments on how things flow, how information is shared. Um, but they got into a, a, a lot of issues. Um, uh, there are a lot of big projects coming up. Of course, they're building the highway shop already. Um, Vernon Manor's talking about possibly building an assisted living facility, a county nursing home, um, and uh, the uh, landfill's talking about possible expansion in the next four or five years. Excuse me. <coughs> uh, and uh, 
So if you want to take a look at uh, some of the issues the county's facing, that's a good meeting to watch. Uh, on Friday, the county IT committee met, also another long meeting, very detailed. They're talking about maybe going paperless, trying to figure out ways to be more efficient. And uh, they've got some projects going in the IT department to use more cloud-based servers, you know, um, hopefully saving the county some money and getting away from uh, actual standalone servers in their IT department. Uh, coming up next week, um, we're going to have some, some meetings coming up next week as well with the county. Um, but uh, the election's coming up on Tuesday, and uh, that is that is going to be a big uh, a, interest for a lot of folks in the area. Of course, the Viroqua School Board, that's been a closely watched race. Four candidates running for the school board. Um, three of those showed up at a candidate forum last Friday that we hosted at Vernon Memorial Hospital. Um, if you want to figure out who you're going to vote for, go watch that candidate forum. You'll get an idea of three of those four candidates were there. Jesse Nelson declining to attend that. Um, and uh, also coming up <clears throat> next Tuesday in that election, Viroqua City Council um, a number of, uh, Steve Beckett all saying not to run again, Paul Woodward and, uh, Paul Woodward and, uh, excuse me, let me look here at my notes. Wards one, three, five, seven, and nine, the odd number of wards for the city of Viroqua up for re-election. Paul Woodward, Dave Trigger said running to replace Steve Beckett all, Steve Beckett all deciding not to run again for office. Um, incumbents, Terry Noble, Mike Kappa. John Thompson and Jeff Golke and the other wards are running unopposed. There's also a countywide um, referendum on the ballot. Some people might be surprised by that. The county did approve putting that on the ballot. Uh, you can read the exact um, wording of that referendum. I'll be posting uh, all this uh, election information on the Vernon Reporter Facebook page. Um, basically what it says is, are you in favor of some sort of nonpartisan process for deciding legislative maps? And uh, yes means you're in favor of some type of process. No means you're fine with the system the way it is now. Uh, the one model that people are holding up is the Iowa model, which um, they say is, seems to be a very fair process, and both parties seem to be fine with that. There's other elections going on on Tuesday as well, depending on where you live. Coon Valley um, Village Board President, um, incumbent Carl Henriksen, and uh, Richard Stegan running uh, for Village Board President. Three village positions open for village trustee um, running on a pose are Gary Kuser and uh, Roger Neatfeld. Um, those candidate profiles for Coon Valley can be found on the Vernon County Broadcaster website if you're interested in who you're going to vote for in Coon Valley. Chaseburg Village President Ken Blusky and Tom Heller running for village president. Westby Mayor Dan Hogerson running on a post. Westby City Council running on a post are Katie Halseth, Wards 3 and 5, and Kurth, Wards 2 and 5. Mark Jelenic in uh, unopposed running in ward one those terms are all for two years westby school board seats two four and seven are all running unopposed for three-year terms um bob kurska dan kodak and eric dunstead um that's the at large run representative those candidates running up unopposed um there is a statewide race on the ballot this time around supreme court candidates brian hagedorn and lisa neubauer uh, polls open at 7 on Tuesday and close at 8. If you don't know where you, you need to vote, maybe you've moved, you're not sure how to register or what, whether or not you need an ID or what kind of ID, you can go to myvote.wi.gov. Very handy website. Plug in your name. You can see if you're registered or how you've voted in the past. Um, you can pull up your exact voting location. You can even pull up a sample ballot so you're not surprised by any races or issues that are on the ballot maybe you didn't hear about. Um, that address again is myvote.wi.gov. Uh, I've got some a few news stories that happened over the weekend as well. Um, actually, there was a lot going on in news. Um, Friday night, Highway 27 was closed. Some of you may have heard about that. A lot of people were wondering what was going on. That turned out to be a, uh, a semi-tractor overturned. That tractor was a semi-tractor driven by Jerry Ray, owned by Nicolotti Trucking, traveling north on Highway 27. The driver reported that semi-tractor started traveling onto the right shoulder. Semi got off onto the shoulder. Driver overcorrected, coming back in the road. Trailer was loaded with organic whey. When the driver overcorrected, semi-tractor um, went back into the roadway. The weight of the trailer caused the truck and trailer to overturn. Um, essentially about half of that load of whey was spilled, so 
Vernon County Emergency Management, their hazmat team was called in. Um, some of those substances can be dangerous if they get down into the waterways. So DNR, Vernon County Emergency Management, um, driver did suffer minor injuries, uh, was taken to Vernon Memorial Hospital. That accident took place um, Friday night. That road was closed for a number of hours while they cleaned up that, um, that crash. Um, also on Saturday morning, 35-year-old Joshua Lusk of Coon Valley um, got pulled over for a traffic stop but ended up with some drug-related charges. They did a search of the vehicle. They located cocaine, marijuana, digital scale, drug paraphernalia. Uh, Lusk was transported to Vernon County Detention. He was facing charges of possession of cocaine, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia. Um, also, um, kind of a very tragic story. Um, on Saturday, Vernon County Sheriff's Office, about 7 o'clock in the morning, they received a call about a missing person, and they received a report of an elderly female, Mary Heath. She was uh, reported to have wandered away from a residence during the night. And as you know, the Mississippi River is very high right now, and their residence was down in the Black Hawk Park area. And the residence was off uh, the main road there near Black Hawk Park, which was underwater. So the only way to access it was by boat. Wheatland um, and DeSoto Fire Departments launched their boats. They were able to recover. Unfortunately, they recovered Mary's body about 300 yards downstream from her residence. Um, so a very tragic incident there along the Mississippi River uh, occurring because of that flooding. Also a very uh, uh, tragic story too, but one actually with a happy ending. That's when in Toma, um, Toma Police Department reported that husband and wife team observed removed a child from uh, from uh, the water at uh, an indoor pool in Toma. An off-duty City of the Cross police officer was on the scene. They happened to be doing training in the area with the Toma Fire Department. So the wife and the off-duty police officer began life-standing measures to be able to revive that child. Um, the husband called 911. Toma Ambulance uh, arrived and transported that child to Toma Memorial Hospital uh, emergency room. The child was tra uh, transported by Gunderson Air as a precautionary metal, but apparently that boy is uh, going to make a full, full recovery, which is, um, like I said, a happy ending to what could have been a very tragic story. Um, some events coming up this week. Um, There is a budget listening session in lacrosse. Some of you might be interested in. Um, not sure if we'll be able to live stream this because there's some events going on in Ontario about the same time. Um, but there's a budget listening session for Senator Jennifer Schilling, Representative Jill Billings in lacrosse at Police Station Number Two at the Community Room. That's at 713 St. James Street in lacrosse. Um, if you're interested in state budget issues, uh, you might want to attend that. The events going on in Ontario. Ontario is in the process of uh, trying to figure out what to do with their community hall. That building, uh, uh, historic building, has a lot of history in that community. And uh, if you've watched any of our uh, flood recovery meetings we broadcast from Ontario, you'll see that that community hall gets brought up a lot. It seems to be very instrumental to that community's downtown, and they're very interested in trying to get that back. Uh, unfortunately, I believe it's in the floodway down there. So they're not sure what's going to happen with it. And uh, so they're having some meetings to discuss what's what's going to happen with the Ontario Community Hall. That'll take place on April 4th. There'll be a meeting at 2 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Those meetings will be at the Ontario Public Library. Um, so if you're interested in uh, those issues, you can head down to Ontario. We will try to live stream at least one of those um, meetings so folks know what's happening down in Ontario. Um, also this week, Starting on the 4th, Vernon County Department of Human Services put out a, a uh, press release earlier this week. It's uh, Child Abu Abuse and Neglect Prevention Month, Vernon County Department of Human Services, encouraging all individuals, organizations to support child abuse and neglect prevention efforts in Wisconsin. Um, as a part of that Awareness Month, they are placing 130 blue pinwheels at four locations of Vernon County. The 130 pinwheels represent a number, the number of child abuse and neglect reports the department received in 2018. They gave some statistics there and what those reports involve. 54 reports of physical abuse, 54 reports of neglect, 12 reports of sexual abuse, 9 reports of emotional damage, 1 report of an unborn child abuse. Uh, so the public's invited to these, the placement of these pinwheels. They'll take place on April 4th in Stoddard, 
at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, at the ball field, April 5th, 10 o'clock in the morning, Vernon County Department of Human Services on Fairlane Drive in Viroqua, April 5th at 2 o'clock, the corner of Decker and Main Streets in Viroqua on April 8th, 2 p.m. at the Hillsborough High School entrance off of Highway 33. <clears throat> so those are some of the things going on in our area last week. Next week, <clears throat> again, the election's coming up April 2nd. Polls open at 7, close at 8. Again, if you're unsure about where to vote <coughs> or who, who uh, if you're registered or where your voting place is or what's on the ballot, go to myvote.wi.gov. Uh, we'll keep you updated throughout the week. And, uh, and again, we'll do election coverage on Tuesday, probably late Tuesday, more, like, more than likely uh, Wednesday morning. For Vernon Reporter, this is Tim Hunt.